Oh, wow. What a Mardi Gras. Wow. I don't know if everyone saw a video I just put up about the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling. Oh, those ladies here, they're wild. Oh, wait. I have five more minutes till midnight. Last of my alcohol. For 40 days, and 40 nights, I'm going to be a dry hobo. Bottoms up. What's that red light? That red light. Oh! I'm live! I forgot about that. Hello and welcome back to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. Wrestling show on YouTube. Again, I'm not wearing my wrestling. Because it's, it's Mardi Gras. It was time to party. And for those of you that have seen... The newest WWE 2K17 Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling. I just put on was pretty interesting. We have some new champions. We have one, we have actually two two returning champions. Good girl Heather, P. Heather. Cecily wanted her rematch. And Diamondback Jack Maverick is again the under the bridge champion. And there are some implications for the Easter show. It'll be very important. Um, I hate to do this, but you have to start off on kind of somber note. Uh, King Kong Bundy passed away. I think some reports, I don't want to quote this because I don't know exactly if it's true or not. He was only 61. That's not good for me because I'm 18 years younger than he is. So that doesn't bode well for me. And I was talking to one of the women, Jim, who is significantly younger than I am. She didn't even know who King Kong Bundy was. I'm old. My world just got a lot smaller. So again, as always, whenever a wrestler of significance passes away, I'm going to have just a little upbeat music. But again, King Kong Bundy, and thoughts and prayers go out to your family. Thank you very much. That was a little tribute to the late, great King Kong Bundy. And seemed to go a little too young. Either that or I thought he was a lot older, though. I, I, thought, I honestly thought he was in the 70s. And you never want to say that that seems the right age to go. But if you're in your 70s or 80s, just seems the natural way, I guess. 60 seems a little too young, and two more minutes, I want to make sure I got all my wine done. A nice big fat feast. Had some alcohol for the last time. 40 days, 40 nights. But let's talk about something more... Or better, or much more better. Let's talk about some SmackDown wrestling. And this is kind of another weird. Falls in the line of Raw, I guess. There are some ups and downs. I mean, SmackDown's definitely the, definitely the better of the two. Just weird. I know it's the go home shows, and I'll see if I can get Doctor Keller in on Thursday. Do his prediction. There's a lot of math that's going to be involved. First thing I have to do, however, is I have to actually figure out which matches are happening. So there seems to be a lot of matches. 
Well, I almost forgot to open my mail, too. No, it's not mail you guys go to. It's the bills. And when you get old, bills and stuff. Oh, wow. I guess that's somewhat fun. I honestly forget. Shoot. Well, it's either very good or very bad. Wait a second, this still doesn't seem right. So I did that. I know you people don't want to see this. And we'll talk about wrestling very shortly. I'm just intrigued by something. Well, maybe. Oh, that's why. Yeah. And, ooh, that's why. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Something to put on the old tech board. Oh, but wait a second. Let's get back to Raw, the SmackDown. So SmackDown starts off. Um, Daniel Bryan comes up for a promo. We have a quick Kofi Kingston flashback. Rowan speaks. Shut up. Good voice that guy Rowan has. And then uh, Kevin Owens comes out again. Amazing promo skills. Tells Daniel Bryan where he can shove stuff. <laughs> Always a good sign. And that's pretty good. So that starts off the show. Good stuff. Kevin Owens, he has some new tattoos, I think. And then our first match is Jay Uso. Comes out with his brother Jimmy Uso. And hold an amazing promo. The Miz and Daniel Bryan. And, uh, Shane McMahon come out again. A pretty good promo together themselves, and this was actually a really fun match. It took probably the right amount of time. Never felt slow. Had a really good pace to it. The Miz, he's so good in the ring. Jey Uso is pretty good too. Jey Uso has to be careful about how he does some of those spots though. Because, ooh, one time he got nailed out of the ring, it looked like he literally <laughs> bounced off of everything. That can't be good. And the Miz is quicker. Miz busts out a new move. He does the running double knees now. Versus just a running drop kick into the corner, which is good. I always like to see it when wrestlers add something to the repertoire. It makes it different. It makes it feel fresh. It's good. Happy to really happy to see again that new move. I mean, Jay can still wrestle too. Don't take anything away from him. And I think I like the fact that this is something a little bit different for the Usos. So now they're having to put together various move sets to really counter what the Miz does, who's really a more ta tactical wrestler. This is good. Eventually, uh, Jimmy Uso and Shane McMahon get involved. There's a distraction. Miz hits the skull crashing finale. Miz picks up a win. I don't know if that's good or not, though. But again, this was a really, this was really a really good, fun cheeseburger match. Let me go on. To a Charlotte promo. Charlotte really that tall? Or is everyone so small? It's just kind of weird though. Um, then you have R Truth comes out. He's going to continue the open challenge. Listen, R Truth, if you did not learn anything last week, because the one thing you do not want to do is open is have open challenges. Very bad. No bueno. So first Samoa Joe comes out. I'm like, yes. And then Rey Mysterio comes out. I'm like, 
Wait, Samoa Joe's in the ring first? Why are you coming in the ring? And then Andrade Almas gets involved? I thought things were going to happen. And they would not have been good things. And I'll tell you what, there were some spots that were really weird and sketchy looking. And the best way to describe the one, you know, when you're playing WWE 2K17, like I did for the Tuna Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling, sometimes you go up on the top turnbuckle by accident and you hit the wrong button and you like fly into nothing. Ray Mysterio did that. And I'm like, that's weird. And I'll tell you what, for part of it, it looked like Joe was going in for business for himself. He was just smacking people. I was thought I, I I could have been worked too, which is nothing wrong with that. But that was just weird. And I'll tell you what, beginning of the match, our truth look had that true look of terror on his face when he heard Samoa Joe's music hit. I'd probably just look around. Here's the belt. Goodbye. Goodbye. And run through the crowd in an absolute fright. It just seemed like Joe was shooting on both Ray and Andrade for taking up his limelight. Again, Ray and Andrade, especially Andrade, you should know better. He has yet to use the muscle buster yet. I was worried that was going to. Actually, it probably would be good if it could be. A while since we've seen the muscle buster. That's always good. When, whenever a wrestler can finish an opponent off one of two ways, it's always good. AJ has like four finishers. He has infinite finishers. And again, everything was weird. Because then they went to the outside for like forever. I could have. I don't know if it's the rules in a fail four. I don't know if there is a ten count. Cause they were out there for a long time. Ooh, that line's kicking in. Oh, and it's Lent now. Woohoo! That was pretty good. Um, eventually things did get a little smoother. I'll say what that in ring action. That was amazing stuff. Uh, Selena Vega got involved. She hurricaned our truth, and then Carmella kicked Lena Vega in the head. So that might be a match coming up. Prawn smacked on. I don't think that's going to be a pre-show match. And when Ray <laughs> did that baseball slide, I think he aimed a little too low, gentlemen. If you know what I'm talking about, he seems to hit Arch in a very sensitive spot. Place where you do not want to be hit. But at the end, Samoa Joe locks in the Coquina clutch on, on, onto our truth, finally. And Samoa Joe, you are the new United States champion, Samoa Joe. So that was really good. I mean, this was a fun. I was scared because I thought it was going to be a terrible match when it first started off. But this is one of those matches I, I turned, and this is a good surf and turf quality match. Then we have a New Day promo from India. They're out on an ex excursion. Then let's... let's so this has another Joe promo. It was so good on promos. Unfortunately, this leads to another kind of rematchy type match. Jay and Alistair Black versus The Bar. Again, I'm not getting bored of it. But eventually it's trying to catch up. Because this definitely was not as good as their first match. This seemed a little bit quicker. Ricochet's not flying around as much. 
I think that true WWE schedule's getting to Ricochet, and his style, that's probably my only complaint. Alistair Black could kick people all day long. So so he he's not going to have an issue. Ricochet, though, all the flippy, flippy stuff, I think in NXT, you'd have to work maybe two or three days. Kind of Wednesday. And either Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and just wouldn't be all three days. Some rest. That kind of worries me a little bit. Again, Cesaro, he has a new stretch. Again, anytime you have a new move in your repertoire, I do like that. Uh, Sheamus wasn't as good as much. He just kind of took the blunt of some of those kicks. Those kicks look vicious, too. And. I was going to give it a higher rating, but really because of all the shenanigans that happened at the end, kind of took away from it. But this overall was a good cheeseburger match. By, me, by what I mean, um... Who was it? The, the bar showed up. Got a tag team. Was it Sandy that showed up? I forget. I kind of tuned out. I'm like, oh. Not this again. And I had to cook dinner for myself. A nice, yummy, big, fat dinner. So good. And then the Hardy showed up. And the Hardy's. Clean and Alistair Black and Ricochet clean the ring. It was okay. Then we had Mandy Rose versus Naomi. Ooh la la. Mandy Rose is getting riskier and riskier. She's good. She's now in that little, like, covers up stuff but leaves things open with straps. And Naomi's wearing a Kill Bill outfit. Hey, Mandy Rose, I'm single too. So, yeah, this was actually a pretty quick match. Uh, Mandy Rose really kind of dominated the match. I know there was the distraction with Boo Sonya Deville. Uh, that's going to get old really soon, though. Overall, it was a ham sandwich. And then, of course, as Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville are going up the stage, she should have known better. Asuka just kicked both their heads off. I think she sent Boo Sonya Deville into the into the um, screen area. That's good for Asuka. In fact, I have to get my niece for Christmas at Asuka Wrestle Buddy doll. That's her Chris. That's for going to be my niece's Christmas gift. Oscar's that good. Then you have AJ style promo. So good as AJ. He definitely knows the business. He starts to really hype up Kofi Kingston. Randy Orton then shows up. Says, Who are you to talk about someone else? Mind your own business. So maybe this will be something between AJ Styles and Randy Orton for WrestleMania. That would. Be a really good opening match, actually. Then we have, I guess, the main event of the evening. You have Kevin Owens versus Rowan. Rowan's just way too strong and way too big for Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens did get his licks in, though. You know, when he got when he got in, he tried to be the faster to opponents. Not really that. He is more agile than Rowan. Rowan's just too strong. And of course, Daniel Bryan's at ringside starts to taunt him. And I don't even think this, this match had to finish. Mainly because Kevin Owens started to attack Daniel Bryan. Of course, that's going to prompt Rowan just to throw Kevin Owens into everything. And then, of course, because Daniel Bryan was attacked, he started to be on Kevin Owens. 
then Mustafa Ali shows back up. And he starts to, to waylay on Daniel Bryant, who's in the ring. And this was a death finish, baby. And in fact, this death to finish had no finish. It don't get nothing. It's just a piece of dust. Uh-oh. That's no good. And by the American Dream Dustin Road standard. Bang, bang. So, that was kind of a wash. And then the last segment, you have Charlotte. Wants to have a friendly discord discussion with Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch shows up. Becky has to learn how to adjust that crutch height. That crutch, I've been on crutches once, and you don't really want to lean that much over. So she has to get the right crutch. The right, right crutch height. And they are adjustable, I do know that. Um, early on, Charlotte goes after her knee, takes her out. Becky Lynch does get the upper hand because she regains the crutch, starts to beat Charlotte with it. Puts Charlotte in the disarmor. I don't know. She stood tall. But a Becky Charlotte Rousey match is so much money, though. I don't know. We'll have to ask the expert's opinion and Dr. Tom when he comes in on Thursday. And that was SmackDown. So that was a good show. Maybe not to SmackDown's high level of quality. Definitely much better than Raw, though. And overall, it was still entertaining. So that was pretty good. Um, a couple other programming notes. Tomorrow, I'm going to put up another video. And that's going to be my year, my one year here at YouTube. Yes, 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 yes. I haven't been kicked off of YouTube yet. That's awesome. We have a kind of a year, year in review. It's going to be kind of me singing and a whole bunch of pictures and stills and a few videos every so often. And then Thursday, it's going to be a prediction video, probably sometime at night. Maybe Friday morning it'll be up. And then Sunday, I think I'm actually going to do a whole show for Fastlane. Yeah, I do like to hear back from you people. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and have a good night, folks. Bye.